Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head, challenged by their thoughts, the voice in their head, and their beliefs. We chat with successful entrepreneurs who share their journey and the lessons learned along the way. The Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast is edutaining, leaving you with actionable advice to transform your life and create a thriving business that aligns with your values and goals. Our conversations are for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life they desire. You deserve it. It is possible. It's time for you to add value. Our guest today, Mike Kim, believes marketing isn't about closing a sale. It's about opening a relationship. This refreshing approach has made him a sought-after speaker, online educator, and brand strategist. He is also the author of the Wall Street Journal bestselling book, You Are the Brand. Nowadays, you'll find Mike looking for the next great place to scuba dive, all while coaching, serving clients, and recording his top-ranked podcast, You Are the Brand. Mike Kim talks about consistency, which creates credibility, which creates a following. His routine includes the five-minute journal, which starts each day with gratitude. He believes so strongly in it that he requires all of his clients to use it. Mike shares about developing the brand within you. Mike, I sure appreciate you taking the time today to come on the show. I just look forward to a great conversation. Oh, Robert, it's an honor to be here. I'm thankful to be here, and I hope to add some value to everybody who's tuning in. Absolutely. So you and I have similar backgrounds, both uh, worked for churches and and started our lives in, in ministry. So tell me a little bit about your transition from, from ministry into the workplace. Yeah, so I stepped away from a full-time position where I was uh, the worship pastor of a church in Hartford, Connecticut, just outside Hartford, Connecticut. That was, oh gosh, 2011. I think I stepped away. So 10 years ago, it's hard to believe. And I was a younger man then, you know, I was, uh, let's see, it was 10 years. I was 33 then, um, and stepped away and I really didn't have a plan. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew I didn't want to do that. (laughs) And the way it happened was kind of a funny story because, um, several years earlier, 2008, I had gone to Colorado Springs and met a a pastor who was doing some similar things to what I was doing. He was just way, you know, further ahead down the road. And um, he was, you know, kind of at the top of the mountain, if you will, like figuratively, but also almost literally his, the, the Colorado <laughs> Rockies were behind him. You know, it was a beautiful church is a huge influential church. And, you know, I, I met him. And then after that, I went back to my hotel and I asked myself like a really innocent question. Like if everything breaks what right, do I want this guy's life in 15 years? And I said, no. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't think I really understood why at the time. It was more like, you know, you meet somebody at the top of the mountain uh, only to realize you're climbing the wrong mountain, if you want to, if, if, if is one way to say it. Um, but that began a slow process of me kind of weaning myself off. Uh, within two years, I had stepped away from that position, you know, late 2011. So that was in 2009. Um, I, I itinerated for a year and I was trying to kind of figure out my life. And um, after a year of travel, I just I just settled down and I was traveling too much and you know, these things opened up and I was working at a company that I used to work at before I took that position and they needed help in marketing. And I realized I was really good at it. (laughs) And then, um, that just sort of, sort of led me down a path of discovering this online world, creating content, starting a podcast, starting blogging. And so that's kind of how it happened. It's, it's kind of a crazy journey, but there are a lot of, a lot of, um, interesting seasons through that, through that transition, you know? Absolutely. Well, and, and then marketing's obviously created some, some great opportunities, um, you know, for, for connections. Um, obviously you've worked with, you know, some pretty big names, you know, Donald Miller and John Maxwell and, and, uh, creating those opportunities, um, those connections. What, what kind of led you down that path of, of getting your name out there? Yeah, you know, it was it's interesting how it happened. It was a little bit of a different world back then too, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't it wasn't as much social media driven as it is today. Um but I had joined a blogging community 
because I figured if I'm going to learn how to, if I'm going to blog, I might as well learn how to do it <laughs> and you know, do it right. And it wasn't any which way, shape or form. It just joined the season. Must have had really good Google search engine optimization. And I joined his program. He turned out to be a Christian. And so I resonated with that. And I just did what he told us. <laughs> and um, I was amazed at how many people did not do what he told them to do. I just I was like, okay, he's the expert. Let me just listen to what he says. And in doing that, people in that community got to know me. And because I was working a marketing job, they would ask me for marketing advice. And then I would blog about marketing and start a podcast about marketing. And I got to know some other influential people because I was one of his star students. And so that kind of got my name out there. And I joined a couple of their programs and on and on it went. And I realized looking back that, you know, much like a lot of other places in life, it's really just about relationships. And it's about who you know and about presenting yourself in a helpful way. And a lot of that I learned in church. A lot of that I learned in ministry. Um, I was good at a few things. That was for sure. I was a strong writer. Um, but I was also a simplifier. And I, I think that was one thing I was known for at church. I just spoke very simple. I just made things, tried to make things easy. And so um, I just stayed consistent with blogging. I started blogging in 2013 started podcasting in 2014. I've almost never stopped other than a couple of months here and there. And uh, I was known for being good at marketing and I'd share what I knew. And and that's just sort of how it went. And it was just kind of people I knew who recommended me to other people. And I guess I did uh, a decent job at being recommendable, you know? <laughs> so that's how it started. It's pretty, in, 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 it's pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I, I appreciate that you, you know, still give the church credit for, I mean, obviously relationships we're supposed to be really good at, right? Like that's kind of the heart of the heart of ministry is, is building and creating relationships. And then, um, you know, recognizing the, the value, I, I appreciate you sharing about, you know, people take these coaching programs and then they don't do what the expert says. So they've paid thousands of dollars in many cases to, to listen to these experts and then, and then don't do any, you know, yeah. well, I know better. I can just do it my way. So, mm -hmm. so I like, I like that you shared that, you know, well, I just did what he told me to do. Yeah. I've always been, I've always been wired that way. You know, whenever, whether it was learning music, whether it was, you know, the blogging, whether it was any of these other things that I was learning right now, I just started taking kickboxing lessons about a month ago and I just do what the guy says, you know, I just trust that he knows what he's doing. Um, cause I'm there to learn. You know, and uh, by and large, once you learn the basics, then you can kind of do your own thing. But I just kind of, I just, you know, the world kind of overestimates all this stuff. You know, it's like there's a lot of people who have attained success simply because just they just do it. They just put in the work. They take action, you know, so. Well, and the consistency, right? Obviously, if you're, you've been consistent with your blog and then you're consistent with, with a podcast, um, I think the evidence is pretty overwhelming that consistency just creates that expectation. Um, it, it creates momentum and, and then, and then great things happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they say, I, I say a lot, you know, it's, um, I'm probably not the first one to say it this way, but um, consistency is greater than intensity. Mm. And it, it just rings true in so many different areas of life. I mean, it's just even exercise, your health, you know, getting good sleep. Um, all of that is about consistency. It's not about, I'm not going to sleep for five days, so I'll just catch up on the weekend. That's not <laughs> how it works. I'm just going to, you know, eat whatever I want and then work out once a week. Like, that's just not how it works. You know, it's it's the consistency of it, even in lesser intensity, that ends up being greater than intensity. Hmm. And so it's the same. it's the same with building this business and just kind of, you know, even reinventing yourself in your life and kind of understanding like where you're going, what you're doing. Um, it's, it's just true. It's just true. <laughs> Absolutely. So which, which of those tools or, or what tools helped you to, to build your own audience, right? I mean, you made yourself recommendable. So, so you had you know clients that were you know referring you and, and spreading the word, but what was it your blog or your podcast or, or the combination of the two, what, what, what helped build 
I would say early on, it was my blog. The second thing I really put my mind to was a podcast. So I say like, you know, in 2013, I started blogging. That was the year of the blog. And I just said, no matter what, I'm going to publish a post every Monday. Um, 2014, I started my podcast and I added that to the blog. So now I was publishing stuff twice a week. And then I did some social media in between. But that's really how I kind of found my audience. Um, then I started launching coaching programs. Those sold partially because I had an audience because I had <laughs> spent two years blogging and spent a year podcasting. And I just did a good job with marketing. And what I mean by that is I wanted to make it excellent. I wanted it to emulate the people I purchased products from mm. or that I hired as coaches. I just figured if I was doing work that was on par with them as much as possible, I'd be on the right track. And so I just stayed consistent with that. And I learned those skills. Um, I will say, I think, you know, my business still till this day, my email list is bigger than all my social media and my podcast combined. And no, not everybody opens it, but I was fortunate to understand early on. I had good teachers that, in this online creator space, um, that is your database. Hmm. Your email list is your customer database. It would like, it would be like getting access to the customer list for an entire department store. I mean, people, companies pay a lot of money for that information. So I've always geared everything towards the growth of my email list and communicating with my email list. Till this day, if people write me on my email list, I will write them back. Hmm. You know, and so that's just kind of how I view it. Um, I was fortunate to have good teachers around me and I teach my, my students the same way. Well, obviously, you know, everybody got a, a, a eight hour wake up call when they woke up and, and Facebook was no longer working. Um, but I think over this last year, there's been plenty of people, you know, for whatever reasons, their, their profile gets closed or, mm -hmm. or shut off. And, and it's definitely a wake up call that, you don't own your social media platform and, and you could have, it doesn't matter what size your audience is. <laughs> if they take it away, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like building on rented land, right? <laughs> so my email list, I own it. My blog, I own it. No one can take it from me. Even if my podcast gets shut down, you know, I can still email my list, those audio files if I want to. So, um, and if we, if you really think about this in that, in this regard, my email list is really the only thing I can sell. If I was to cash out my business and say, I don't want to do this anymore, would anyone pay for MikeKim.com? No, there's no other Mike Kims that would want my <laughs> domain, but they'd pay for my email list. And so, you know, that's how, that's kind of how, how I articulate the value of it to people. This is the one thing you can actually sell if you ever wanted to sell it. Even if you don't want to sell it, you still have to understand that this is the biggest and most important thing that you have. Yeah, it's really no different um, than an HVAC company or a, or a plumbing company. Like when they sell, their equipment isn't worth near as much as their list. <laughs> right. Their list is the thing that matters. Yep, um, absolutely. And, and the thing that somebody else is willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you've had opportunities to work with, I mean, Donald Miller and, and, and John Maxwell. And what... I'm trying to think what the... What, what value, I mean, obviously you gained a lot from those relationships as far as, you know, recognition and the ability mm -hmm. to say, hey, look, these things that we're doing at, at this level for growing my blog, growing my podcast is helping to grow, you know, their book and their brand and, and, and the principles are essentially the same. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say with all due respect to them, I didn't really need them. I had my own name before I signed on with any of them. In, in fact, that's what gave me a lot of positioning. Uh, I talk about this in my book. You know, client work is not bad, especially if it's going to elevate your status or elevate the kind of people that you run with. It's not a bad thing. Um, but you have to decide if you're going to be positioned as a collaborator or a competitor. <laughs> If I wasn't good at certain things that could help them grow their business, they'd never work with me because I'd just be another marketing guy or coach that they'd have to compete with. And they were a little bit ahead of me. So why, why work with me? 
But if I could collaborate with them, I could loan them my expertise and my skill. It was, it was a partner up for me in a lot of ways. And it didn't put me in a position where I was a hireling. Mm. These guys hired me, but I also opened a lot of doors. I've gotten, I got speakers for the John Maxwell conference for them, you know, cause I knew these people, I got the executive vice president of Disney. They didn't know him, mm-hmm. you know, so I got him to speak at the events. Um, I've opened doors for these guys. And so, you know, that's what having a personal brand will do for you. It, you know, having your own following, having your own influence, having your own tribe, you know, that's how that, that, that can really put you in an advantageous position to leverage and maximize the relationships and connections that you make. Nice. And you, when you taught us at, at, at the event that you and I met at, you did a, an extra bonus session and, and talked about the three stories that, that basically every entrepreneur needs to, to share. Would you be willing to share what those three stories are and how you help people articulate their story? Yeah. So storytelling is of course, like a huge part of marketing. It's a, it's a big backbone of marketing and it's because that's how human beings communicate, right? I've shared several stories already today. You know, it's, it is like, you never make, tell a story without making a point and never make a point without telling a story. Right. And, um, when I look at what stories people need to tell, you know, regardless of what business you are, it's the founder story, the customer story and the business story. And so the founder story is really why you chose this line of work. How did you get into this? You know, you asked me earlier, how did you get into marketing? And I shared those thoughts. The business story, how did your company start? How did your business or your nonprofit, how did that start? You know, that started for me in 2015. You know, when I went full time, I started blogging, I started podcasting, but 2015 was the year that it went all in. I went all in, right? And that's when... Mike Kim, the business, full-time business really started. Then you have the customer story, which is all about the transformation that your clients experience. We know these as case studies or testimonials, right? Um, So being able to tell these stories, you know, just having them, right, is really, really important because a lot of times people think, oh, tell your story. (laughs) And you think like it's a what am I going to tell you? My life story. No one wants to hear that. And nobody wants to tell that. Nobody wants to write that. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. It's just the founder story, the business story, and the customer story that go a long way in helping people understand why you do what you do and how you got there. Absolutely. I think, and, and like you said, never tell a story without making a point, never make a point without telling a story. Um, it's so, so valuable, right? And, and too many times we're just telling stories yeah, obviously, especially social media and and people are just putting stories out there with no, you know, no purpose. <laughs> and uh, and so I think it can be helpful to recognize that there is power in your story. One of the things when I work with clients is helping them change their inner story, right? Change the story that they've been telling themselves, typically about their past events or typically about their beliefs about themselves and, mm-hmm. and their capabilities. Um, and so I love the, the opportunity to tie that in to the stories that help market their business and, and grow their business. And so you've got the the stories that you tell yourself that need to change or you need to upgrade. And then, of course, that helps you upgrade your stories that you can tell your future clients, right? Tell yeah. your audience. Yeah, absolutely. So how important is is character? How is, you know, obviously you come from a, the, a faith background and, and, and our faith. To, to, to emulate the character of Christ is kind of the, the groundwork for us in the church world. Um, but how does that shift for you in the business world? You know, I tell people this, just be who you say you are. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't, warts and all, <laughs> just be, because, I mean, I, we can go down a theological rabbit hole here, but pretending or putting a mask on has never helped anybody. It's never helped anybody. You know, um, I don't, I don't judge people. That's not my job. You know, my job, I serve everybody and anybody I can, as long as they're not harming anybody. Mm. Right. Um, I don't care if they're of this faith background, that faith background, whatever it is. It last time I checked judge is not my title. 
you know, Amen. I'm not, I'm not a judge. And so like if, if people, and I take, I, I'm very proud of the fact that I have people from all walks of life who work with me and, um, no one ever got whole. Oh, no one ever got, became healed or ever got better in any way, shape or form, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you name it, mentally, um, by pretending to be someone that they're not. Mm. I mean, we, I mean, we've all met tons of people, <laughs> you know, who are in complete denial publicly about what's going on in their body. And they will continue to eat horrible food and never exercise. <laughs> and they're just not honest with themselves. And until they're honest with themselves, they won't get better. Mm. It's the same mentally. It's the same emotionally. It's the same spiritually, whatever you want to call it. So, I also am very attuned to the fact that if I was just born in the Middle East, there's a 95% chance or maybe greater that I would not have been a Christian. So I'm not going to hold that against somebody. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like I was born in California. I mean, okay. Like, what else are we supposed to do? I'm a Korean kid. Like, did Koreans go to church? You know, this is what we do. So I also realized like a lot of that has to do with just where we were born, how we were born how we are raised and all that sort of stuff. So I get asked a lot about, Hey, notice you don't, don't talk about your faith. And I said, how do you even, just because you find me on Instagram, how do you even know anything about me? <laughs> a guy just emailed me the other day or DM me because I had a picture of wine on my Instagram. And he's like, I noticed, I was like, do you, do you even know who I am? <laughs> like, this is like, just cause I'm a public figure. It's like, let me message this guy and be like, oh, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I noticed you're not too faithful. I was like, you don't even know where I was born. Like, I don't even know who you are. It's a weird culture. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. There, there's just, there's all this pretense of relationship with no relationship. And so then you heap on a ton of like all, whether it's cultural, whether it's political, whether it's religious, whatever it is on top of that. And we just assume everyone else should live according to the way that we think. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know you, man. You know, I didn't really answer him because I've been around that bush before and it just doesn't get anywhere. Right. It doesn't go anywhere. So I'm like, I don't waste my time on that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I'm never going to ask someone a question like that unless I'm willing to take the time to get to know them personally. Hmm. And so, um, you know, you ask where character comes in. Uh, I don't think that anyone needs to be a religious person or of any particular faith background in order to be honest, kind, um, empathetic. I don't think that those things should be exclusive because if, even the term Christ-like, I get that. But I've always, even since I was young, I just thought that that was weird. <laughs> I'm like, shouldn't we just normally be like this? Like, do I have to try to be good? Or can I just grow and mature and become a good, loving person? Because <laughs> I'm always going to have a lot of faults, right? So that's just sort of how I look at it. I just tell people, look, if you're loud and brash and whatever, be that way. And if I can't handle you, then we'll go our separate ways. But just at least be who you are. Because <laughs> the last thing I want you to do is pretend like you have to be someone you're not around me. <laughs> and I'm going to be the same way with you goes so both good. ways, right? So um, that's just kind of how I live my life. That's that's more than just a business thing. It's just a life thing. Well, and it should be just a life thing, right? But I think uh -huh. I think entrepreneurs that are growing their business take personal growth at a different level, and 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 it becomes it becomes more than that, right? There 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 becomes a bigger impact on humanity. There becomes a a, a a, a, an authenticity that isn't you aren't you aren't finding in other places, mm -hmm. and and I just I just read a manifesto at a church that just says you know we love beer, and and the reason <laughs> the reason they love beer is because they don't want to be the church that says hey we drink beer Monday through Saturday but whoa Sunday no can't drink can't have it here, and and I appreciated just that authenticity of. You don't have to wear a mask here and pretend that you're something that you're not mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I just appreciated the honesty in that. And, and I agree with you that, you know what, humans were created to help humans and, and take better care of each other. That that's, that's what life should be at its simplest form. And I think entrepreneurship draws that out because entrepreneurs are problem solvers and they solve problems for people. And the more people you can solve problems for, the more people you're serving and helping and, and that's helping humanity. And so it's, uh, it, this last, obviously this last couple of years has just shown so much, um, Mm -hmm. emotional volatility in our culture and so much division and, and, and I want my company, I want people that I've impacted in their lives to be willing to say, we're going to make a difference. And I, Mm -hmm. and I like that, you know what, I'm, I'm going to serve people. I'm going to help people unless they're hurting other people. And then, no, I'm that, that's a place where we're, we're not helping you hurt other people. We're going to, we're going to draw yeah. the line there. And, yeah. and that's a great place, right? We want to help people who are helping people who are helping people. Um, and just trying to make this place that we live on a, a better place for everybody. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by Add Value to Life Coaching and their Inner Circle Team Coaching with a new team forming in January. Limited seats are available. Apply during the month of December to be a part of this group coaching program. It can be found at addvalue2life.com. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. So you've traveled. How, how has play and fun been a part of Mike Kim's business journey or entrepreneurial <laughs> journey? Uh, I have a lot of fun. I'll admit I have a lot of fun. Um, I also work a lot. And so I think one thing I've come to learn about myself and accept about myself is that I'm an, I'm a very extreme person. <laughs> um, very little ever goes in moderation for me <laughs> in anything good or bad. It's, there's just never any moderation. Um, some of you may have heard of this personality test. It's kind of a rubric called the Enneagram. And I'm a certain number on that. And, uh, it, you know, the numbers don't matter. It's just what readout you are. And um, it basically says that, like, I don't want to be controlled. And I just want to control my own life. I don't necessarily want to control other people. I just want to control my own life. But because of that, uh everything is very extreme. I'm very intense. Now I would push back against that because I'm not in people's faces. I'm not, you know, that kind of an intense person. But what I realize is that there's a lot, it takes a lot for me to feel anything. So it has to be pretty intense. So like I just shared before, it's like, okay, uh, I'm working this, this crazy schedule. And then, um, when I'm hanging out with friends or like we just had Thanksgiving, right? This not too long ago. And, um, I mean, I'm out four nights in a row and I'm like, this is just, I mean, till the wee hours in the morning, this is just normal. Um, I decide to sign up for an exercise program. Do I take, you know, the, the little beginner class? No, I sign up for full contact kickboxing, (laughs) like at my age, I'm like, what am I doing? But this is just what I, it's just how I do it. And so, Robert, honestly, like, again, like, this is tying back to just be who you are, right? Um, that's who I am. Uh, I Even when I rest, quote, unquote, rest, I rest aggressively. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to get a really, really strong, like, two-hour massage, and I'm not going to do anything for the whole day. You know, even the rest is intense, right? And so... Um, Work and play have intertwined quite a bit because I do like if I'm traveling for work somewhere, I'll stay a few extra days to go see the place, see the city because I'm pretty locationally independent. So I enjoy doing that. Um, You know, earlier in the fall when we had better weather, you know, I was playing golf two times a week for a few weeks in a row. I found my friends like they our schedules all worked out. And again, I'm like, this is more golf. I've played more golf in this one month than I have in the last four years combined. But it was just an intense, concentrated period. And then here you go, right? So um, I have learned, in all honesty, though, in the last few years to kind of shut off work, 
to draw boundaries. I try not to work on Fridays unless it's like an interview that I absolutely can't move because some people have, you know, events and stuff on Fridays. Um, that's been really good for me. Uh, I don't take any calls of any kind before 11 a.m. Eastern. So I have my mornings, you know, and I can meditate. I can read. I can journal. I can work out if I need to at that time. Um, so, you know, it only leaves me, you know, several hours a week you know, to get everything done, you know, I have 20 to 30 hours and they better be really good uses of my time because those 30 hours are really intense. I don't sit around and have water cooler talk with anybody, you know, um, you, you know, this, you can work 40 hours a week at work, but really only do 15 because you're just <laughs> wasting less. the other thing or less. You're just yeah. wasting the rest of the time. So, um, that's kind of what my life has looked like. I don't know that there's a such thing as work-life balance. I don't think that exists. Hmm. I think it's about harmony. Like if you oh. really think about an orchestra, what's hmm. harmony? It's the appropriate amount of attention to the appropriate thing for the appropriate amount of time. Hmm. Yeah, I like That's that a it. lot. You know, and so this year was intense with a book launch and then a program launch and all these other things going on. Uh, it was an exception to the rule. Um, but it was the appropriate amount of attention to the appropriate thing, you know, for nice. that time. So, yeah. So what does it look like designing your life around the lifestyle that you want? Yeah. It's like, I think more, we have more agency over our lives than we tend to think, hmm. you know, when I worked my, my corporate job, I would, feel like I was a victim at times. Oh gosh, I can't, I don't have any time to do anything else. I don't have any time to work out or whatever it was. The truth is I could have quit my job. How are you going to quit? Like we, let me see if I can phrase this right. You know, like, <laughs> Oh, I'll say it this way. Okay. I don't have kids, but a lot of my friends have kids. And, um, you know, sometimes the guys and I talk, <laughs> and like, oh, you know, I can't do anything. You know, I've got kids and I've got a wife. I was like, you can literally do anything you want. <laughs> no, I can't. I have kids. I was like, you know that people leave their family and kids all the time, right? Because <laughs> that's a choice. So I know what they're saying. I'm not arguing semantics here. It's it's we don't realize that we actually have a choice. They just don't want to make that choice because they think it's the wrong choice. Okay, then fine. But you're disempowering yourself by saying, I have no other choice. I have two small kids. What am I going to do? You can choose not to raise them. You might hate yourself and be a really bad guy, but that's on the table because people do that. So if that's on the table, then something else can be on the table. Mm. Um, it's a choice. Uh, do I go to my kid's soccer game or do I, you know, work another job? That's a choice, right? And I don't mean that to demean the situation. I'm just saying that we have more choice than we think. When I was working, you know, this crazy corporate job and I was working a different job and then I started this side hustle, I made a choice not to ever go out. I spent all my waking moments just working on building this business. It took a lot more work than people think, you know, um, but that was a choice. And I have friends exactly the same age who are making more money than me back then who look at me now and say, oh, I don't know how you did it. I'm like, <laughs> I was you literally, <laughs> you saw it. I just worked differently. I, I made different choices than you. You had more money than I did when I was growing up. I mean, you can't say that I, you know, that I, this was handed to me. So everything's a choice. Everything's a choice. So when I look at my life, I, I, when I find myself a little stressed out, you know, I say, why am I even working this hard? What am I doing this all for? I could take, I could take some time off. Um, the other things I guess I would say is that I really try to, I try to give time and room in my life to, uh, chase my curiosities. Hmm. So, you know, lifestyle wise, yeah, I've traveled a little bit here and there and, and that's, that's great. But right now I'm really into just staying home, you know, just, I, I live just outside New York city. Um, I'm enjoying, you know, this 
kickboxing training. It's new. It's fun. Uh, it's getting me to move in different ways. And it's not about staying glued to my to-do list. It's, you know what? This is pretty cool that I can go do this on a Friday afternoon, hmm. you know, or, you know, t- tomorrow, uh, Tuesday morning, I've got to work out. Right. And th- that's kind of nice. And that's sort of how I've configured my life. And so this sounds a little strange, but when you are given the ability to make those choices, you realize it's harder than people think because most of those choices in life are determined for you. Mm. Where you live, where you work, it's often determined by who you're with, who you love, where they're paying you. And, you know, I chose to live here amongst, you know, the area where I grew up and near a lot of my friends. And it's just, I don't, there's no reason I should be spending this much money living in this part of the country as a digital nomad. I do not work in New York city. I don't need to be in this area. It's just where I grew up. (laughs) And so, you know, I just try to leave time and make sure that I go do things that will make me feel, you know, like, okay, this is what I want to try out. This is good. It's making me a better person. Nice. Yeah. How have routines helped in that? You mentioned, you know, a couple of routine kind of things. Um, that you keep in your schedule, but mm. how, how have they helped you in, in your productivity? Yeah. I, I think the, the only one real thing, maybe two that, that have really helped me, especially over the last year or so is number one, I take, um, I write in something called the five minute journal almost every day, both morning and evening. It takes five minutes each time. And I've been surprised by how helpful it's been to help me know what my life, what in my life makes me happy. Mm. So in the morning, you know, you answer a couple of questions. It's, you know, three things you're grateful for, three things that would make today great and a daily affirmation. And in the evening, uh, you write three amazing things that happened today. And one thing that could have made the day better. Hmm. And I thought this was just, you know, ridiculous. I just thought it was the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but you know, it's, it's really been powerful because, you know, people will see my life and, you know, I hear this from a lot of folks and I know that they mean, well, they must, they say, Oh, what's it like being a best selling author or, you know, what's it like doing all, having all this success. And I'm like, I literally really don't think about it. And it doesn't mean I'm not grateful for it, but you know, Becoming a best-selling author happened one day out of 365 days this year. That's not a very big percentage of days. The other 364 days were pretty routine days. <laughs> and if they're routine days, I better. I hope that there's something in my routine day that makes me happy. <laughs> right. Because it, you can't outweigh 364 bad days with one good day. Life doesn't work that way. You know, consistency is greater than intensity, right? Mm -hmm. So that's been one habit. And I actually force, um, I require from all my coaching students and my mastermind members that they do it. They follow this journal. Like they have to. I just won't work with them. Because what what, what ends up happening is they find like, they feel like their life is miserable. And I'm like, no one can help you with that. Right. You you think your life is miserable because you don't track your life. Hmm. You know, if you can't track it, then you're not going to improve it. You're not going to measure it. So that's one thing. The second is um, I I blast cold water in the morning for a shower. I take cold showers. And that just every day, I know it sounds crazy. I'm doing it even right now in the wintertime. But um, every day, you know, like I just do it. And it gets, you know, my mind... I mean, definitely wakes you up, (laughs) uh, gets it, you know, there's a lot of physiological advantages to it, you know, and a lot of emotional advantages to it. I just kind of get out everything that's in my system. You know, I've been sleeping and it's like, it's just, you just wake up. You know, a lot of people wake up slowly to their day. Uh, and I used to do that for years. Most of my life I did that. And you're, you're relying on coffee to wake you up, mm. an external substance to wake you up. 
you have everything you need in your body to wake up, you know? So uh, I've been doing that. It's been so, so good for me. I never get sick, you know? Um, I think it's bolstered my immune system in a lot of ways. And even mentally, I'm like, well, if this is how I'm going to choose to start every day of my life, there's not much that I can face the rest of this day that will be as bad. <laughs> and it's really true. I mean, there, there have been days where it's like I, I put on a song, a couple songs. I know how long they are. And, you know, when I get to the halfway point of the song, I'm like, I've come too far to fail. It's 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 shorter for me to finish the three minutes or whatever it is in this in this shower than to stop. And I say to myself, I did not come this far to fail. Mm. And I say, I find myself saying that in so many other areas in my life. So, yeah, nice. those are, those are some odd habits. Um, not I at guess, all. You know, people think it's intense, you know, so there you go. But yeah, it's, it's been very beneficial for me. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, the five minute journal and three things you're grateful for. How has gratitude been a value I mean, I don't even know how to articulate that. It's just, you know, it re you train yourself to see the good in everything, really. Hmm. Yeah. That's you a really great do. statement. Yeah. Train yourself to see the good in everything. There's always something you'd be ha happy for. Hmm. Absolutely. All right. So now, since you just mentioned, you know, being a best-selling author, you know, impacted one day, but what has been the impact of being a, being an author? Not necessarily best-selling. Just what, what has been the impact um, I, of in your book? I think it's the sense that I did something that I knew I had in me and I just got it done. It wasn't easy to write. It wasn't always fun. Um, it was hard. But I wrote most of it during the quarantine period in 2019. And I was I had been kicking off the project. I'd been kicking the can down the road for a long, long time. <sighs> And I finally said to myself, like, you know what, if, if I don't do it this year, I'm not going to respect the guy that I see in the mirror. Ooh. And to me, that's a lot of how I live my life. Like, can I respect myself? You know? Um, and so I just hunkered down and did it. I do not know how I did it. You know, it's just like finishing school. It's like writing a big paper. It's like going through a big move. You're like, how in the world did I get here? You just did it one bite at a time, one step at a time. But I'm happy it's done. Um, I'm proud of it. It's the best I could have written at the time. And I'm also not really attached to it. I don't know how else to say it. Like, you know, I, I don't mean that to minimize it. I'm proud. And it, I never expected it to make me very, very happy. Because my happiness has been found in the things that I do every day the little things that I do every day, working out more days than I don't, getting good sleep more days than I don't. Um, you know, like when I'm with my friends or my family, truly being with them, you know, not being distracted, not being ruled by social media or my phone or all the immediate things that people want from me, you know, really thinking about even just with my work, you know, I, I'm on the heels of, you know, you'd be one of the first to hear this about starting a marketing agency. Because while I love teaching marketing to people, no one's able to do it for themselves, or very few of them are. And while it's easier for me just to make money teaching and make a living teaching, it's not as fulfilling because, you know, my students and people I teach aren't getting as far. Hmm. Wow. And and I'm just like, I've got the team around me. And, I, you know, I just said, let's go help a few people. Let's let's go help them. You know, even my kickboxing trainer, I've mentioned a few times, like, I love entrepreneurs. They're risky. They're risk takers. I'm like, he can't afford us. Let's just go help him. Nice. Because, you know, he's 20 something years old, 28, 29. He's, you know, he's living on a dream. Hmm. And one of his students is a best selling marketing author. I mean, like, it, what am I supposed to do? Like just sit around and do nothing, you know? So, you know, he's like, Hey, you got honorary membership at the gym. I was like, whatever, it's all good. I just want to, you know, I have these skills and I feel like I wouldn't be doing right by the world 
if I just hid behind a computer and just kept creating podcast episodes and creating content, but never really getting in the ground in the dirt with people. Hmm. And that's kind of what I want to do. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that leads to, to contribution. Obviously that's a huge contribution to a young entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but what other ways has contribution um, been possible because of the business you've built? Yeah. I think that, you know, I've just tried to open doors with people and help them accelerate their process, help them accelerate their journey. Um, I do really believe if someone has the right heart and the right situation, the right posture, their life will be better because they met me. Hmm. You That's know, awesome. I just view it like I just say it like that, you know, like, hey, I'm I'm here to to help people and to make their lives better. Um, and I, I believe I've done that, you know, to a certain degree. Um, I've tried to help charities that I support. Um, you know, I have a certain skill set and a certain demeanor and personality or whatever, and whatever I can do to encourage others to to move further down the road, you know, I'm good with that. You know, I find that fulfilling. Um and and yet I don't look at my life through the lens of and maybe I'm still too young, but I don't look at it like how much have I contributed to the world? I don't look at it like that. I'm just like, just be a good person to the people around you and help them out. So that's just kind of how I look at it. That's perfect. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> so obviously now you're, you're a mentor in, in, you know, so many ways, mentoring entrepreneurs and, and helping others. How have mentor relationships helped you on in the journey? Yeah, I've had good mentors in my life. I really have. Um, especially when I was young, I didn't have a lot of guidance from my family. You know, I didn't have a lot of guidance from my dad. You know, church was good for that initially. Like I met a lot of, you know, people through that. Um, no one's perfect. Some are far from it. Um, but, you know, no one, you know, there are people who are born on third base and they, try to take all the credit for scoring the winning run, you know, and <laughs> that's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah. I, I just know that I wasn't born on, on third base. You know, I, I, we never had a lot of money. We didn't really have anything much other than just some typical suburban family. Um, so I put in a lot of work and like, you know, you, you asked me in the beginning, Robert, like when I, when I, when I found an expert, I just did what they said. <laughs> I just did what they said and I took action. And so I've had mentors, some who I know, others who I'll never know, others who are dead. You know, I've just read their books and, um, you know, I've just tried to be that for the people who are in my life. And that's, it's simple, you know, it's simple. I don't ask anything from them. I don't ask a tribute or anything like that. I just, a tribute. <laughs> you know, it's just, you just try to be good to the people that you're with. Well, I love the circle. Obviously, you, you've created a circle. You've chosen to live in the city of your friends, um, even though, you know, you wouldn't have to. And you could mm. be anywhere else on the planet. And uh, and so I, I, I love that so much revolves around you, your 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 circle of friends, your circle of family, your circle of, of entrepreneurs. Um, and, and that that community is is so valuable. And yeah. so I appreciate you sharing that and, and building that. So what inspires Mike? Oh, just at this point, it's just trying to be better at things that I feel contribute to my growth. You know, that's just, that's important to me just to grow, you know, um, if that means something as simple as learning a new sport so that I can move in a different way. Great. If that means, changing my business model so that I can help people in a different way so that I, you know, feel like that's just the right thing to do. Great. Um, I think young people taking a risk inspires me. I think older people taking a risk inspires me. I think people at any time someone takes a risk to become something better than who they, where they are inspires me. Hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I see that, you know, and I, I, I am inspired by that. I watch sometimes videos of great athletes in the past and how they approached life in the game. And no one's ever won every game, <laughs> but I realize, oh, it's not about that. You know, yeah, you want to win, but it's the mentality day in and day out. You know, seeing leaders and how they they are on the field or on the court or in the boardroom. 
you know, it's it, that inspires me. Well, that's really the value of letting go of the outcome, right? Mm-hmm. Recognizing that that they're not in control of the outcome, but they are in control of their daily routines and, and yep. their daily daily activities. Um, and it's so challenging, right? We we want to have an outcome, we want to get the win, but it's really the journey, it's really the process yeah. that that that's going to get the win, whether it's that win or or the next one. Yep, absolutely. So good. So you mentioned kickboxing, you mentioned some other things. What else do you love to do in your free time? Man, I just like to hang out with friends. Mm. You know, we'll we'll catch up, eat, you know, have a few drinks, whatever it is. Just hanging out. You know, I spend too much time working alone anyway. <laughs> so that's that's why it's actually been really important for me to come back home. Um I'm okay working alone, but in the evening I'm like, okay, gotta go, gotta go out, gotta get out of the house, gotta go, you know, go do something, um, be around some people, you know, just be around like go outside. You know, it's it so yeah, that's that's just kind of what I do. What know, are, and I, I ask people that, that question a lot and they say this they all say the same thing too. So it's different. It's just our friends, it's just where we do, you know, where we eat and all that kind of stuff. You talk about going outside and just one of my favorites during 2020 during the pandemic is you out on your porch and one of your neighbors is yelling at and or you yell out and they yell back. Yeah, that was actually lip sync. So that's from Coming to America. So a lot of people thought that the audio was real. That was from the movie. And he just lip synced it. It's an app called TikTok, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. But yeah, it's just, you know, I have a weird sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was funny, though. <laughs> there you go. There it was very go. funny. All right. So what's what's your big dream? I don't know, to be <laughs> honest, you know, I, I've lived a good life, you know, and I'm dead serious. You know, it's, I've lived a good life. You know, if there's more to see in it. Great. Um, I've gotten to a point where like, I just feel like it's not about like what I've done with my life, like work wise, you know, um, but I've lived my life the way that I preferred to live it. Nice. Others prefer their own kind of life, which is completely different from mine. So if you're you're among the people who can live life the way that you want, that's very rare. And I can also say, like, you know, with, with everything you've asked, I feel I've made a contribution to the world. I've left my mark as much as I can so far in this life. And if God were to say, hey, game's over, I'm like, all right, I can't complain. Doesn't mean I want to leave, but can't complain. Um, I'd like to continue spending time with family and friends and, you know, who knows what happens in my personal life. You know, I don't know if I settle down, meet somebody who knows. That would be nice. Or maybe it won't be nice. I don't know. <laughs> you know I've done it once before, you know. So, um, but I'm I'm truly very content with my life. And so what that means is I've got to continually find the next thing that pushes me to grow. And that I've recognized, you know, that kind of boredom or when that sort of thing settles in and like, what am I doing? Like, it's because I'm not pushing myself enough in other areas. Um, A new business venture or more money will not change me the way that going hiking somewhere will. No. So good. Or like being in like nature or seeing something completely new. Um, it's a, it's, I'm just looking for more of those kinds of experiences and with people. Cause man, you know, that's, that's all you have at the end of the day. I'm never going to say, I wish I worked more and made more money. <laughs> you know, I just, I love the memories that I've made with friends. So that's, what's meaningful to me. So if my dream was just simply to do that, that would be it. Make nice. more memories of friends. So where, where do you want to go with your friends? Anywhere I want to go planet? to space. I want to go to space. That's definitely something I want to do. Um, an African safari, maybe. Eat my way through Italy. Nice. Those definitely some things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are definitely things I've thought about. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. 
All right. So young entrepreneur, you just had coffee together and you're going to leave him with Mike's words of wisdom. Action cures fear. Mm. You know, you'll always be scared of something. I mean, even, you know, in my business, like sometimes I'm scared to do things. You just got to do them. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's it. If you're an entrepreneur, that's your life sentence. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, if, if not, if you're not an entrepreneur, okay, you can get away with it. But if you're an entrepreneur, your life sentence is you're always going to be on the edge. And so you might as well be comfortable getting there, you know, or staying there. So nice. Mike, yep. thank you so much for such a you're great welcome. conversation. I really enjoyed our time together. Thank you for having me. It was an honor. If you enjoy the show, please like subscribe, and leave a review. We have a free gift for you at add value, the number two, entrepreneurs.com. Our Cyber December deals include one-hour coaching slots for only $97. That's a 75% savings. And we're launching new Inner Circle Team Coaching in 2022. Applications are open in December at add value, the number two, life.com. In our next episode, Anthony Truck shares about how mindset is only a piece of our identity. And when life happens, it is your identity that determines if you're running towards the challenge or away from it. He wants to help others make an identity shift that leads them to the life they desire.